Welcome to Downshift, my name is Matt and this is the BMW Z4 and you can kind of think of it as the rich man's Miata, but better in every pretty much conceivable way. So today we're going to take a tour of all the coolest and most interesting things going on here, so let's get into it. The first thing we'll talk about is the configuration. Now it only comes in rear wheel drive, it only comes with the soft top, as you can see here it's black, and it only comes in the eight-speed ZF Auto. But that's okay because it's an awesome gearbox. And then touching briefly on styling, it is classic Roadster through and through. Look at how long this hood is. And then of course you've got this really aggressive face with kind of split, almost double angel eye headlights. Really, really cool. Shadow line package for all black accents. Of course, it is just a two-seater, but you do have some added practicality back here, and we'll talk about that, and a really short deck out back, but it's still a pretty practical trunk. Again, something we'll talk about in a minute, but classic, classic Roadster essence. It looks pretty aggressive. It looks pretty good. And then just touching briefly on this paint, this is Portimao blue, and it is stunning. Look at all the dimension that you can see in the hood, and look at the metal flake that you can see with the reflection from the sun. Now, if it were me, I would choose between this or Thunder Knight Metallic, which is kind of a purple. But you also have your shadow line package to make things a bit more black and aggressive. But just look at the way this paint shimmers in the midday sun. And then talking wheels and tires here, we've got an upgraded 19-inch wheel here. They look pretty cool. They're a black and silver two-tone design. You've got M in your center hubcap. You've got upgraded M Sport brakes, courtesy of the dynamic handling package. And it's all wrapped in a super aggressive and really grippy Continental Sport Contact 6 performance tire. Now I just mentioned this car has the dynamic handling package and it's about just under $2,500, but you get a lot of good stuff that'll help performance. You've got an M Sport differential out back so you won't just be spinning tires. You do get an adaptive suspension that you can genuinely feel behind the wheel. And like I mentioned, you get these upgraded red M Sport brakes. Another thing that you really feel and does make a difference on the road. But since we mentioned M Sport stuff, and it's a BMW, we have to talk about the M badges. Now this isn't an M car, this isn't even an M light car like the M40i. This is the base powertrain, but with the dynamic handling package, you get a bunch of upgraded performance stuff and it all says M on it. So we're gonna count all of the M logos. We've got one for each of our wheels, so that's four. We've got it on the front brakes on each side, so that's six. And then interestingly, we even have it on the smaller rear brake, so that's eight, and then, as we step into the car, I've got it on each door sill, 10, and not to be left out, the M Sport steering wheel makes 11. But of course, there's other letters on this car. We're gonna count how many Z4 badges there are. So there's one on the tailgate, of course. There's one on each side of your rollover uh, head bolsters. Stepping into the interior, we have one hidden in your center console, and we have one up here for your wireless charger. So that, I believe, makes five if you include each one of these headrest things. So more M logos on the Z4 than Z4 logos. But now we're going to address the elephant in the room that everyone seems to be concerned about with this thing's estranged cousin, the Supra. This is essentially a Supra without a roof. And the Supra being one of my favorite sports cars, it's no wonder that I like this thing so much. But if you were thinking that this is a Toyota, you'd be incorrect. Toyota essentially bought this chassis and this engine family from BMW. So under the skin, it's all BMW and it's all real good. And then there's the hood. Obviously, it's a mile long. We've talked about it. You come in and it's the classic double hood release, which let's be honest, this is a better way to do it than trying to stick your hand in this little slot and then fumble for the release. So you open it up and let's take a look. Twin power turbo, it's a twin scroll single turbo. But look at this, you've got faux carbon fiber designating how many cylinders you have. This is interesting. And then also, if you zoom out here, look at all this extra room that we have in the front. Now, obviously this is to make way for the B58 straight six upgraded M40 version. They've definitely left enough room and you kind of have to have a little bit of extra space for this long roadster hood. And then let's address the roof. Now, like I mentioned, it is soft top, black top only, but it's actually pretty quick. It goes all the way up 
in 10 and a half seconds and the same thing on the way down and you can put it up or down at speeds up to 32 miles an hour which is pretty quick it feels a little uncomfortable doing it at that speed but i had to test it and this bit here is your wind deflector and this is an included piece you can remove it if you want a little bit more wind in the cabin or if you don't want to listen to your passenger but with it in it actually keeps things pretty quiet pretty refined but still gives you that nice open top experience and i thought this was interesting now all audi convertibles have silver a pillars and windshield surrounds but this i believe courtesy of the shadow line package blacks out your front fascia or your front a pillar and window frame surround but not only that you can see you have a little microphone in here. So if you are driving with the top up, you've got your window up here, this is perfectly shielded from the wind. So you're going to be easily heard by whoever you're talking to. This is clever, this is brilliant. And then we're talking third brake light and I have no idea why, but these are always interesting to me on convertibles. You do have typical uh, outboard rear brake lights, but you have to have a third for regulation purposes. And this one is a mile long. But let's address the practicality concern. It's not powered tailgate, but it doesn't need to be personally. You have a reasonably large opening. It's not the biggest, but it's certainly bigger than most. And then you look in here and you have a cavernous trunk for a Roadster. I mean, this we're talking double or more from a Miata. This is really, really impressive. And not only that, you see this little door that you get back here? Well, if I pull on it here, you have a pass through into the front of the cabin. This is wild and a modern luxury car worth its salt absolutely has ambient light. And you do here as well. Although if you weren't looking that close, you'd probably never see where it was during the day. It's right here under your really cool speaker covers in the doors. It's also right here rimming the lower portion of your center screen. You've also got it rimming the interior of your center console here and on the outboard vent on the other side of your gauge cluster. I have it set to purple, which is what I've enjoyed this week. And we kind of touched on this earlier, but let's talk about the engine. Now, like I said, you get those interesting carbon fiber fake bits over your engine cover, but you have a great engine here. It's a two liter turbocharged four cylinder that we're used to from BMW's lineup. In this tune on the Z4, it's making 255 horsepower and going to the rear wheels with these Conti Sport Contact sixes, zero to 60 is good for just over five seconds, about 5.2. I mean, that's really not bad. This thing's rated for about 28 MPG combined, 33 on the highway, which is about what I was getting. And to be honest, I've really enjoyed this engine more than I thought I would. It gives you a good exhaust note. It gives you great sounds on shifts and it's got plenty of torque and punch. And then I'm gonna talk about something I was pleasantly surprised to see. Now in your vehicle settings, you can go into driving information. You can scroll over to sport displays. Now this is something that's typically reserved for like top of the line AMGs, top of the line M cars, Porsches and that sort of thing. But you get live readouts of things like your boost pressure, your engine temperature, and your live readouts of your torque and horsepower. I mean, this is just kind of fun. And of course you've got a G meter in the center here so you can see exactly how the car is performing. This is just something really cool to have and something that you don't even have to go up to the more powerful version to get. And then speaking of interesting displays, if you scroll over, it's got a sister display and it's your energy flow. This of course is about a 48 volt mild hybrid system so you can see where the car is recouping energy and where it's deploying energy. And of course you've got a little uh, uh, gauge in here. If you go to Eco Pro, this will charge under certain conditions. So it's kind of cool that you can see this is something that's usually reserved, again, for more robust and comprehensive hybrids. But to have it here, it's just kind of interesting. And then just touching on the cabin space and comfort, this feels worlds and leagues bigger and more spacious than a Miata. I can sit in here comfortably without even putting the seat all the way to the floor at about 6'1". You could drop it even further to fit people probably about six foot five, maybe even 6'6 six, six in here. And you could do that comfortably with the roof up and without obstructing your view with the top of the windshield. Again, something impossible to do in something like a Miata. And kind of in that same vein, we're gonna talk about additional storage. Now we talked about how big the trunk is, but then you can see even behind the front seats here, you've got a little shelf here for, for some additional storage. This is where that cubby is for that pass-through that we mentioned before. And then you look on the interior here, you've got a little secret compartment to the left of the steering wheel, very German in fact. And then you've got this secret deployable button. And what do you have but legitimate cup holders and some additional storage in here. Again, the Miata's is about this deep and about that long. So this is way more practical. And then not only there, you also get a little 
wireless charging pad. This is about a $500 option. It's not part of any additional package, so you can have it bespoke or on its own with a 12 volt and a USB. And not only that, but you do, unlike the Miata, have a glove box and some door storage. I mean, this thing is like, it's like a, a utility vehicle. And the interior design, of course, it's pretty familiar BMW. However, I will say, I do love this Cognac Vernasca leather. It's kind of a saddle brown. It's very nice. And the seat design here that you get on the Z4, I don't believe you get anywhere else in BMW's lineup. And another nice thing about the seats is, like I said, they are suitable for people probably about six and a half foot. Uh, but you also have heated seats. The thing that's mildly annoying is that you can't get cooled seats on here. And with the top down and the sun baking on the interior, my butt is gonna be hot when I sit on these seats again. And then there's the gauge cluster, which is fully digital and it's 12.3 inches, which technically makes it bigger than your infotainment system, which is about a 10 inch screen. And speaking of your center infotainment system, like I said, it's 10 and a quarter inches. You get Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, you do have to get the BMW app, but it's totally fine. It's nice and snappy, it's on the last system of iDrive, and you do have, of course, reverse cameras as required by law, but you also have the backup assistant. So it will steer itself and help you get out of tricky parking spaces that you may have gotten into. And I always think this is cool. Now watch the top of the screen. I'm not gonna push any of these buttons. I'm just gonna run my finger on them. You can see they're kind of like capacitive and they give you additional information as you run your finger on them. So you can see exactly what preset you're gonna go to and what station that is. And this is also equipped with the premium package, which is about $3,000. And for that, you get remote start, you get a heated steering wheel, you do get comfort access. It'll lock itself as you walk away. It locks itself within like three feet of you walking away. You get lumbar adjustments on your seat. Like I said, the seats are heated, but not cooled. And then interestingly, again, another window sticker quirk is the fact that it says it's heated front seats as opposed to, well, I don't really know. Of course, you get adaptive LED headlights, you get park assist, and a lot of nice stuff. And the last thing we'll talk about is price. Now, BMW Z4 starts at about $53,600. As tested, this one's about 64.5, which is big money for the four cylinder, but this thing is about as loaded as you can get it. If you wanna upgrade to the big motor B58 straight six, that'll start about $66,300. And if you're wondering about maybe what could be considered the closest competitor, the Porsche Boxster, that starts at about $65,000, but you're only getting four cylinders at that money. And we know how quickly Porsche prices can ramp up. So those are the 30 most interesting things about the BMW Z4. Thank you again to Jeff and BMW USA for giving us our first BMW press loan. This thing is a lot of fun, but if you wanna hear our full thoughts, make sure you subscribe because next week we're doing our full and comprehensive review on this Z4. Thanks again to everyone involved and we'll see you in the next video.